Wow. There are no words. There are no words. Thank you for joining me. The match has just finished. Maldives 4, Sri Lanka 4. An unprecedented, unexpected, in incredible, incredible result for the Golden Army, for Sri Lanka. I will try my best to be impartial in this one. I know that the Maldives will be licking their wounds a little bit, but let me just start by saying what a result that is for Sri Lanka and what a game it was. Obviously, from a neutral perspective as I am, that was a stunning game and I was willing Sri Lanka on at the end. The lowest ranked side in the competition in front of a home crowd that after 50 minutes must have been just devastated with how things were going. We'll get onto that shortly. But what a comeback. And we are here to discuss those highlights. Firstly, excellent coverage from um, Football Sri Lanka uh, on YouTube, making it available for people like myself to watch. Uh, I thought that the coverage was excellent. I thought that the opening ceremony was absolutely fantastic. It's looking like it's going to be a great tournament, this one with great support. Great support from the home nation, of course, in Sri Lanka, but also the travelling Maldives fans as well. A packed out stadium and a really cool trophy as well, the unveiling uh, that happened before the game. It, it was it was really, really cool to see. It's, I thought that the whole presentation of the event was done fantastically well. And then, of course, we got down to business. My notes pad is here. I was scribbling away the whole game. There was so much that went on in this game. And the interesting stat before this one was that in the previous 18 meetings, Sri Lanka only winning two. Eight of them draws and eight of them wins for the Maldives. Of course, the Maldives, heavy favourites for this competition. And I think they still will be, but they can be got at, can't they? And I think that that's where the gaffer will be paying most of his attention defensively, conceding as they did. It was a busy early few moments. Uh, I've written down that Ishan was pivotal in the early stages and I thought that his energy in the first half was great. He lacked a little bit of guile in the attacking positions, as, as did a few of the forwards for Sri Lanka, but I thought his energy was fantastic. I thought that Hamilton was looking beasty. I thought he was looking really strong. Just sat protecting that back four in that defensive midfield role. Won a lot of headers and he had a tough game today uh, against Ali Ashfak, who was playing a, almost a false nine for the Maldives. So he kept dropping into that hole and buzzing in and around Hamilton, which made it a tough challenge for the UK-based Sri Lankan international. But I thought he handled it quite well in large periods of the game. And, and Sri Lanka had large periods of this game. But... Literally not long into the game, how long was it? Eight minutes in, 1-0 to the Maldives. And it came, I suppose it was coming. Sri Lanka having all of the ball, but just getting hit on that counter-attack like you wouldn't believe. Every chance that the Maldives had, Ashfaq would drop into the gap, spin, he would just pivot on a sixpence, and that ball was going left and right in behind the fullbacks, and those wingers were cutting inside and causing absolute chaos. Uh, Ashfaq played brilliantly um, throughout the whole game, really. The corner kick comes in, it's cleared but not fully away and Ashfaq picks up the ball, delivers and it's a really, really good header from the captain, Akram Ghani, uh, putting his side in front just eight minutes in. And then moments later, I think, what, 10 minutes was it? It was 2-0. Um, Fazir with the goal, again, following a brilliant through ball. Uh, poor defending, it has to be said, from the fullback, but uh, but a lovely finish from Fazir and it was 2-0. And at this point, 10 minutes in, I was... I was feeling like it could be any score. I think it could have been a cricket score. You know, Sri Lanka predominantly a cricket side and it could have been a cricket score at that stage. And I was, I was worried. I was worried for Sri Lanka. Obviously, from a Maldives point of view, they'd have been loving it. Uh, and rightly so. They were playing some good stuff. And the two words I'd use to sum up the Maldives, counter-attack. They were just incredible at it. They would, they'd sit back and... Um, Sri Lanka would have to try and play their way out, commit players forward, and those balls in behind, predominantly coming from Ali Ashfaq, that were just pinpoint, um, were causing absolute chaos. It was in a quiet 10 minutes because Sri Lanka had a lot of the ball and the counter-attack wasn't quite working, but Sri Lanka just couldn't get through. Dylan De Silva buzzing around like you would not believe. And he played really well throughout the whole game. And obviously we'll get on to the second half shortly, but that final product was just missing in the first half. Um, Razik the same as well and, and even Ishan, all of the front three were working so hard but they just couldn't quite get those shots away. There's a few attempts 
blocked 23 minutes the first chance came and you know it didn't really even make through to the the Maldives goalkeeper it was just comfortably blocked by Ghani at the back and, uh, and the counter attack was was sprung forward um, there was a challenge on 25 minutes that I thought it was worth bringing up from Samoon Ali on Dylan De Silva uh, in the Premier League that could be a red card um, I don't want to dwell on that one too much but in the Premier League, that could be a red card. He goes in slightly out of control. Uh, it, a free kick was given. Uh, there was no booking. But with, uh, with VAR, they would have looked at that and I'd have been surprised if Ali had got away without a red card for that challenge on um, Dylan De Silva. Uh, he goes over the top of the ball and the second leg comes in. Both studs are showing. Uh, did it make a huge difference to the game? No, not in the end. But it's, it's worth picking up that you know without, uh, without VAR, it's, it can be a different game. Uh, it would have been harsh, yes, but you see them given, is uh, is my point. And at 27 minutes, I wrote, how is it 2-0? How is it 2-0? Sri Lanka having so much of the ball, playing really, really well, but they just could not score. And then um, the next note that I've got is that the reason why the counter-attack from the Maldives wasn't working in that period, really between 10 minutes and half an hour, was because of Puslas. Um, I, I thought that... Um, Pussas was absolutely incredible all game playing left-sided centre-back, but he was having to cover left-back, he was having to cover the right-hand side as well. And the one time that he was beaten was uh, Ashfaq played the ball in behind the fullback. He went across to try and deal with Ibrahim Hussein, uh, who then just, what a goal that was, cuts inside Pussas, cuts past Jamira, and then drills it near post past Sujan Pereira as well. A really good goal. And I thought, wow, that's harsh, was my immediate reaction. I thought, wow, that is unbelievably harsh on Sri Lanka but the fair play to the Maldives because if it was done on XG expected goals which is a stat that comes up more and more now you'd have to say that the Maldives dominated that first half Sri Lanka had all the ball uh, and, and chances to create chances but didn't manage to score and um, and they didn't even really manage clear-cut chances whereas the Maldives yes I think they had very few shots that didn't lead to goals but they were all pretty clear chances their, their first three goals pretty clear chances um, and it was half time uh, half time Sri Lanka dominating in terms of the ball after the third goal as well but 3-0 um, performers in the first half for me you know to kind of sum up how I thought the game was going I've actually listed more top performers for Sri Lanka than I have for the Maldives for the Maldives um, it looked very much like the new coach, Francesco Moriero, was getting his tactics just right with the, with the spring on the counter, getting in behind. Uh, and I think he'll be disappointed with the full-time result because they were dominating at half-time. I thought that um, Akram Ghani at the back was dominant against the front three of Sri Lanka and that Ali Ashfaq was really the difference at the halfway stage. And I thought for Sri Lanka, top performers were um, Ducks and Puslas, as I've said already, but also Mo Fazal and Dylan De Silva, I thought, were brilliant um, in the first half. And it was a very, very harsh 3-0 halftime um, scoreline. But it was all about how the sides came out in the second half. And I think the mindset of Sri Lanka wasn't changed by the fourth goal that went in on about 50 minutes. It was clear that Ali Ashraf was looking for a goal. He'd had a few wayward efforts, a good save from Sujan Pereira, as well on about the uh, the 48 minute mark and then um, and then it was very much clear that Ashraf was was desperate to get a goal and he did get his goal it was a, again a lovely move turn the defender inside out and I've put um, Ashfaq 4-0 masterclass and I, th I think that that's the way that the game was going uh, I thought it was an absolutely brilliant performance from Ali Ashfaq I thought that Moriero had tactically set up the side just right um, and it was 4-0 and that's why I'm going to take a pause and a drink of water because I absolutely need to. Because what happened next was stunning. It's about 52 minutes that goal for Ali Ashvak. And I put just before that um, Dylan De Silva, the tad wasteful on the ball. And I feel harsh saying that, but he, he ran the show. And sometimes I felt, just keep going. He was being really unselfish. And that proved, you know, the right thing in the end. But at times throughout this tournament, I think that DDS is just going to have to pick up the ball and go with it because he's he's such a talent, 19 years of age, such a talent for his national side. And I think that those opportunities where he sort of tried to drill the ball across with his left foot, just try and cut in because the worst that he's going to do is draw a foul. Um, and I think that 
you know, there's a few scenarios where the front three, again, for Sri Lanka, just lost the ball. Um, and, and that allowed the Maldives to just spring that counter. But then it clicked into place. And the next, from 64 to 72, Razik was unplayable. DDS as well, with, you know, assists. But Razik, the, the clinicality from him was nothing short of stunning. Of course, a player that's played a lot in Germany throughout his career as well. And I felt like as the game went on, there was a few players for Sri Lanka that you could almost tell that they'd had that sort of European influence, as it were. I feel like Hamilton, DDS and Rizik, the fitness level started to show from those boys. And the Maldives were starting to tire and that's where they switched off defensively. And Sri Lanka were patient and then they started to take those chances. Razik on 64 minutes with a good finish following a brilliant bit of play from DDS to set him up. And then it was 4-1 on 64. And I thought, fair enough, they deserved that goal. But I had no idea what was coming because three minutes later, DDS again with a brilliant run cuts it through, reverse pass from him into the path of Razik, who just just scoops it over the keeper and in another brilliant finish 4-2 and I muttered the words surely not is a comeback on and my goodness it was because 72 minutes this was a lapse in defensive concentration here the ball's out wide it breaks to DDS who plays a, a good ball in to Razik who just stops the ball dead and it's so obvious that he's just going to turn onto his right and try and kick it in. But the whole Maldives defence just stops. And this is where Moriero and of course the Maldives fans will be disappointed because that third goal, so preventable. Just stop him from turning onto that favoured right foot and that goal doesn't go in. But he pivots well. It's a good finish from him again. 4-3 with 20 odd minutes to go. And you're starting to think, surely not. Surely not. Just to remind you, before this tournament started, um, Sri Lanka past the 200 mark in terms of FIFA men's world rankings uh, and the Maldives 156 and that's a big gap and that is a big gap that's the likes of um, well, I can't even think you know Belgium playing against I don't even know I, I wouldn't even know someone in the sort of 50 60 region but you know that kind of gap internationally speaking it's a big gap 50 places almost in the FIFA men's world rankings and suddenly this game was 4-3 and I, and I thought at that point that the game started to slow. And I thought, fair play to Sri Lanka for putting their all in and making this a respectable scoreline. Because when it was 4-0, I was panicking. I was panicking. And I thought, even, even as a neutral, I was panicking. Because I don't really want to see 10 nils. Um, I get, as a Maldives fan, you want to see a 10 nil. Uh, I get, as a Sri Lanka fan, of course, if you're winning, you want to see a 10 nil. But these Middle Nation games... They can be painful to watch if it keeps going that way. And when it was 4-0 after about 50 minutes, I was thinking, oh my goodness, this could be a cricket score. But the resilience from the whole side was phenomenal. But the game then drifted a bit for about 20 minutes, really, from the sort of 70-minute mark right until the end of the game. And I just think that fitness was the main factor. Obviously, you could tell that the pitch out in Colombo had been heavily rained on, and hence the reason for the postponement of the start of the tournament. But really the legs, you, you could see the legs. The Maldives then were really, really, you know, seven or eight men behind the ball. And Sri Lanka, that's where the quality came in. Sri Lanka weren't able to break them down. That's not disrespectful to Sri Lanka in any way. But the Maldives were a very solid side, or, you know, certainly should be. And, you know, Sri Lanka was struggling to break them down. I think that that's a fair assessment of how those 20 minutes went. And then there was a corner. And it didn't massively need to be a corner, but the ball was put into a good area uh, and, the, and the ball cleared away. And you think, OK, is there a chance here? Because I think it was Chimera had an opportunity at 4-0, I think, to, to get a goal back from a corner. And he blazed it over the bar. It was a really good delivery. It might have even been from Ishan that the ball came in. I'm not sure. Maybe Fazal. But I thought... OK, there's probably half a chance here, actually, because Sri Lanka are quite a big side, certainly at the back. 
We're in the 93rd minute, three minutes of additional time. The game is basically done. And what a delivery. What a delivery. Because there's so much pressure to get that ball right. The pitch is sodden. The ball's covered in mud by this point. The pitch is ruined. And the delivery was sensational. Looping over the top. And I think it was Chimera who climbed the highest and nodded it down. And you see the ball. It just hits the ground and sticks. But who's there? Razik. He's already got himself a hat-trick. And the composure in the 93rd minute to bring the ball down again, swivel and pop it home. Absolute scenes. Absolutely incredible, incredible scenes. 4-0 down after 50 minutes. The game finishes 4-4. And you know what? I think that's an entirely, entirely fair result. I think that the Maldives will be kicking themselves. But they're... They're to blame. They're to blame. They got outplayed in this game. Obviously, you know, as you'd have seen in the preview, I do want Sri Lanka to do well in this tournament. I, I think that it's a huge oppo opportunity to show how far they've come and how much they've progressed. And you saw that today. 3-0 at halftime, very harsh. There was a few players that made a big difference for the Maldives in an attacking sense. And then as the game went on, Sri Lanka just started to dominate more and more and more. 4-0 after 50, they kept their heads up and they went again. And I honestly think that that is completely the right scoreline. Completely the right scoreline. What a game. What an opening game of this tournament. We've of course got the Bangladesh Seychelles game to look forward to as well. Not entirely sure when that game's being played because of postponement due to weather and things like that. But Sri Lanka, I said in the preview which you can check out on YouTube as well, that Sri Lanka, if they drew against the Maldives, they'd had a shot to get into the final and they could win this tournament. And I stand by that. I stand by that. I said I'm going to go with my heart. And my heart was almost exploding at the full-time whistle. It was an absolutely incredible game. An incredible game. The Maldives will be devastated. But if you're a Maldives fan, you've got to be fuming. You've got to be fuming. You're 4-0 up against the team ranked 50 places lower than you in the FIFA World Rankings. And you let that slip? All the credit, of course, goes to Sri Lanka. I thought they were incredible. Man of the match has to be Rizik. It has to be Rizik. But special mention for De Silva as well. I heard on the commentary they were talking about how good he was. And he was phenomenal. I thought that the, I thought, sorry, that the front three... I thought that the front three... Uh, for Sri Lanka, deserved their goals today. I thought that Ishan tried really, really hard. Technically, he's clearly not as gifted as some of the other players like Rizik and DDS, but <sighs> I'm actually knackered after watching the game. I don't know how the players feel. If you're from the Maldives, you're devastated. The scenes were absolutely incredible. This has the makings to be a phenomenal, phenomenal tournament. And this is one that I'm going to be keeping up to tabs with. I've spoken for about 20 minutes. Um on what was one of the craziest games I've ever seen. I hope that you've enjoyed this review. I hope that you tune into all of our coverage of the tournament. We're not going to be doing watch-alongs because if games are like that, I just want to sit and watch and enjoy them uh, because it was a stunning game. All credit goes to Sri Lanka for not only setting up this tournament, but also putting in a performance like that. I thought they were absolutely stunning and I thought they deserved their point today. And I'm wishing them well for the rest of this tournament. The Maldives will learn their lesson, I'm sure and um, the Bangladesh and the Seychelles, of course, the big game to look forward to in the rest of that group. Obviously, whoever wins that will go top. I think that Bangladesh probably have the edge. But Sri Lanka will count themselves now as a contender to win this tournament and a contender to lift this trophy. And the whole nation should get behind this team. I know it's a cricket nation, but this side is going places and this side is trying so, so hard to compete with sides a lot better than them. And that showed today. And my final point, just to re-emphasise, Fully, fully deserved from a Sri Lanka point of view. Fully deserved. And I'm, you know, I've, I'm going to be wearing my Sri Lanka shin pads for the rest of this tournament. I'm going to be cheering them on, wishing them well. I do love watching Ali Ashfaq play for the Maldives. And there's no doubt for me that they still will be in the final. They just need to switch on a bit at the back. Oh, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to enjoy, enjoy watching back over the highlights of that game. What a performance. There are no words. What a performance. Razik, man of the match. Dylan De Silva, pat yourself on the back as well. Some really good performances. Hamilton, Puslas, Pereira at times. Um, to I know he conceded four, but he was pretty solid between the sticks at key moments. Uh, made a few good quality saves in the second half to keep it uh, at four. 
What a comeback. What an opening game. And uh, of course, if you are watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment. Let me know how you thought the game went, what you thought a fair scoreline would have been. I thought that the result was about right. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. We've had uh, plenty of new subscribers recently, which is absolutely fantastic. We love that you guys are enjoying the content as well. Uh, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It'll pop up on the screen shortly or will be down here somewhere as well. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Sri Lanka football. That's all I can say. Thank you to Sri Lanka football because that was an incredible, incredible game. And I hope you've enjoyed this match review and I hope you join me throughout the rest of the tournament. Absolutely fantastic. Sri Lanka, well done. Maldives will have to go again. What does this tournament have in store for us? I don't know, but I know one thing, that it will be sensational. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.